Enter into a covenant with God is the name of this, Cherry. And let's bow our heads. Lord, I praise you this morning for all that you have done for us. Lord, I love to come into the house of God and learn of you. I love the teaching. I love preaching. And I love the word more than anything in this world. I love you. And, Lord, we love the Word of God because it gives us the strength. It gives us nurture. It gives us the light that we need. And, Lord, I praise you for all that you're going to do. Lord, I pray that you would touch and heal the bodies this morning, those that are sick in body, those that are going through heartache this morning, Lord, uh, on loss, Lord. I pray that you would be with that family and give them strength through all the, the situation that they're going through, the circumstances they're faced with this day. Lord, I pray that you would take the coals from the altar and that you would place them upon my lips this morning, that you would anoint me, that I would war, uh, bring your word to your children, Lord, as you give it to me. And, Lord, that you bring my remembrance all the scriptures, all the words that are spoken in this hour for this time and season. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Genesis six seventeen. So it's enter into a covenant with God, and we're going to enter in. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants us not to know the covenant of God, but he wants us to enter into a covenant with God as we enter into a marriage. And that's what this is basically going to be about, is entering into a covenant. A lot of people, they know someone for a while. You know, Jeffrey knew Sarah for a little while. But there was, it, it, it's a difference of knowing that person they love that person, but they don't want to get bound. I, I, I have I know individuals that they know people, that they, they, they know them, they see them, they go out with them, they love them, but they never enter into a marriage with them. They never get into a covenant with them. They don't want to be responsible. They don't want to be obligated. They want to be able to come and go as they please. A lot of people in this day and time are doing the same thing to God. They don't want to enter into a covenant with God. I don't, I, I want to go to church when I want to. I want to do this when I want to. I, you know what? I will listen to the things of God when I want to. I'll read the word when I want to. I'll just do whatever I want to, but they don't want to enter into a covenant because they know that you got to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. They know that they need to line up with God. They know that they need to change in their life, and that means that they may have to give up some things, but they don't really realize that they don't have to give up anything, that when they start walking in the spirit and seeking after the face of God, that when they get that covenant with God, and when they become one with God, that their life will automatically start changing. They'll desire the the same way that I desired, the same way that Jerry desired. I'm going to tell you something. When he fell down in the ant bed and came back up, he was a different man. I didn't even have to tell him anything. I mean, it was whatever. I mean, God was able to talk to him on his own. He didn't need me to say anything to him. I didn't know what to expect. You know, I, it, it blew the socks off. But I knew that God had moved in his life, and I knew God had done a ra radical change in his life. And behold, I even, I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth in Genesis 6, 17 and 18 to destroy all flesh. Now listen to this. Wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die just as it was in the days of Noah in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the end time. But with thee, with you and I as children of God, will I establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy son's wives, with thee. You shall come into that covenant. I will establish my covenant with you. I am going to put that ring on your finger. When I was watching Trisha and Joe last night, and there was the vows, and I love what the preacher had to say. I know that he went on for a little while, but it, it was really good what he was saying. He was trying to express to them, and they were up there at the front. Maybe everybody else didn't catch it, but those two that were listening to this, he was expressing to their life that this is a covenant, and when you come into a covenant, you're not to break it and uh, another thing that we're going to get into here in a few minutes is how God showed us different things that he would give we as children of God or as people that 
that we do different, there's different marriage ceremonies. Some people jump on top of a cup or smash it or, or they have a picture. They give them their picture, and uh, not a picture of themselves, but a, they literally give them a, a bowl or, or picture, a picture or something like that. And that's their way of consummating a marriage. And some of them jump over a stick. There's all kinds of different ways. Well, you and I, we put a ring on each other's finger. And then we come into covenant with one another. We become each other. A lot of husbands, some of them don't want their wives going anywhere without that ring on their finger I was trying to find a ring because Jerry doesn't wear his old one we don't know where it is and so we can't find that and so we were looking for a ring because I want everybody to know he's married and he belongs to me well it's because I went in covenant with him and I want everybody to know that yes he is married he's not available you know, he's not available to anybody but to me. Well, God makes a covenant with you and I, and when he makes a covenant with you and I, he wants us to show people that we belong to him. And our lifestyle and the way that we act and the way that we react to other people is going to reveal to them that we have a covenant with the Lord. Now, if we don't have a covenant with God, our lifestyle is also going to show that we don't have a covenant with God because we're not doing the things. Because if I can tell you this, if I was going to the, if I had a, uh, if I didn't have my ring off and I went to the clubs and I went here and there and I did what I wanted to, I'm acting as if I didn't have a covenant, that I don't have a husband, that I'm not bound to a husband, that I, I don't need to follow no rules. I don't need to keep any kind of covenant. But see, there are rules in a marriage. There's a way to live. There's a way. Uh, let me tell you something. When you get married, you find out that they have a say-so in how you dress. <laughs> they have a say-so in where you go. They do have a uh, say-so. And they do. And if a husband loves his wife, he, that he's also going to realize that, that she has a say-so. Because she is going to say, you know, I feel this way. And he's going to listen because he loves her. And he's going to try to understand her side of the story. Because he loves his wife. It says, he that loves his wife. You need to love your wife. You need to love your husband and submit. You need to love your wife and care for her and nurture her as you love the, your, the, the, the Lord as much as you love yourself. In other words, do you love me? And you say you love this person, you're going to show love. In Genesis 9, 19, 9 through 17 says, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, There is a token of the covenant which I have made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a token of a covenant. In other words, here's my token. Here's my uh, ring I'm going to put on your finger. There's my token. I put it on your finger. Now we have a covenant together. You know, as it, I, I fall follow that all the way to the end of course because I'm the mom and I'm going to watch everything that's going on and so I follow that all the way to the end even to the point where they uh, went and exchanged their rings their little token but at the very end he said now I pronounce you man and wife in other words, the covenant is complete. And you and I, Jesus wants us to come in covenant with him. And then he also wants to be able to get come in covenant with your children and your children's children. That is the reason why I always pray for my children and my children's children. Because he wants to come in covenant. And he also wants to have your inheritance to have a covenant with them. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. And so he set the bow in the cloud and it shall be a token of covenant between me and the earth and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall no more become flood to destroy all flesh and the bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth and God said unto Noah 
This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. He gave him a token and he gave a covenant. He's saying, I won't destroy the earth. In Genesis 15 and 18, he also gives a covenant between you and I that he promises that if you and I will turn our hearts, our whole hearts to the Lord. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram. He made covenants with many of the children of God, saying unto the seed, Have I given this land and from the river of Egypt into the great river, the river Euphrates? because there's a covenant with you and I that you and I can receive the blessings of God. You and I receive those things. When we have children, we're going to leave them inheritance. I guarantee you, you're not going to leave it to someone else unless your children are disobeying, they're unruly, they're in prison, they're, they've murdered somebody, they're out stealing. You are not going to leave your inheritance to them because you know what they're going to do. They're going to squander it. If they're strung out on drugs, I'm talking about people that know better. They, I'm not talking about people that don't care and don't know better and don't love their children I'm talking about people that love their children I'm talking about a God that loves you and I he wants us to keep the covenants he wants us to keep the commandments he wants us to come in unity with him there's a time and place that you got to make a choice I know about God I know about his love I've heard about his mercy I know about his commandments I've heard all the precepts I've heard mama preach and preach I heard daddy preach and preach I heard the teachers I heard all of them talk about it. But there's going to come a day when you got to make a choice. you got to make up your mind. Are you ready to be married to Christ? Are you ready to, give the tra- uh, to, to exchange tokens? Are you ready to commit your life to that individual? Are you ready to commit your life to God and say, Lord, I will do whatever you want. I will give my whole heart to you. I'll become one with you, God. I'll become one individual. I will love you to put your spirit into me I will become one child I will become one in God you and a woman and a man they become one when they come together when they get married that's the reason why we put the unity candle up there because you take the flame and you take this other flame and you put it and it becomes one flame I've always told Trish and Joe and when they were together and I talked to Joe on the phone I said you're going to become one torch because you're no longer two torches torches but now you're one torch and you're bigger than that before you're not a small flame now you're a bigger flame now you're a torch and you're to carry the light of God and let me tell you something Jesus wants us as well to become one because see let me tell you something you can't be much of a light on your own you can try to do it in the carnal man you can try to walk in this walk in your flesh you can try to live for God but you're going to find yourself stumbling and falling constantly and yes you may stumble and fall after you come to in covenant with the Lord but you have an advocator with the Lord who is able to forgive and give, forgive you your sins but Jesus wants us to come to a place in our life that it's time to marry him it's time to give it all up it's time to say no more of the old lifestyle no more of the old friends no more of these old things because let me tell you something sometimes when we come into marriages there are some things that might have to go in our life because see those people might pull you down those people might cause you to do things that might destroy your walk it might destroy the way that you live they may not be a good thing to have around in your life they may not be so good for your marriage they may not be good for the I'm talking about the marriage with Christ they're not always good to hang around I got news for you I am not going down to the pool hall I'm not going down to the old clubs I'm not going to go down there and find some of these old friends that are strung out on drugs and hang out with them unless I would just want to go down there and preach to them and witness to them and I sure ain't going to bring them home to my husband because you know what I came in covenant with him and there's some things he don't like and there's some things that I don't want him to hang around they go out and hang out some places I don't want them going to hang out so that we don't get along too well so you know what I hate to say this but when you come in covenant you become one in Christ and when you love one another you respect one another you care about one another you want to reach out what am I saying I'm saying when you come in covenant with God you respect 
God. You care about God's house. You care about the necessities of God. You care about the bills of God. You care about if you give into the house of God. You care about what you're doing in the house of God. You care. You want to work in the house of God. You want to find what you can do for God. You want to clean up the house of God. What am I saying? I'm saying you want to clean up the things that God has given into your life to work in. You and I, we got to come to a place in our life that it's time to make up my mind. Do I want to serve God or do I just want to play around? Do I just want to play around? Because, see, there's a lot of people playing around. There's a lot of uh, girls and there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of women and men, and they're playing around. And they're uh, fornicating. What is God saying? You're playing fornicating. You're fornicating. You're not committing to me. You're not uh, giving your whole heart to me. You're playing that game. You just want to live in fornication. You want me when you want me. And then you want to go on. You ever seen those? Christians, you want me when you want me. I need you today, so I think I'll go to the house of God. I need you when the bills can't get mad. I need you when the house won't close. I need you when this bill can't be mad over here. I better go do something for God. And let me tell you something. Jesus says, I want a covenant with you. I want to marry you. I want to become one with you. I want to make you my own. I got to work for you. I got a calling in your life. And there's more to what you were brought into this world for. And it's not to come and go as you please. You ain't going to come in here and lay down with me and then walk out the door. But I want you to do a work for me. I want to marry you. I want to consummate with you. I want to make a covenant with you. I want to exchange vows with you. I want to do these things. I want you to make a promise promise to me that you'll live for me the rest of your days and serve me get committed have a determination i'll make it to the end i'm gonna tell you something in this day and time you better have a determination in your marriage you'll make it through high hell and water or your marriage won't make it when things go wrong and go sour it's time to get up like that preacher said when you look over there at that husband or that wife and says i don't like you too well you may not say it to them. You better not say it. Jeffrey and Sarah don't say that to each other. <laughs> but if you look at each other, say, I like that person too much today. You need to get down on your knees and you want to pray. You better seek the God that you know. You better call on God. You better have a made-up mind. This marriage is going to work because the world don't want it to. The devil don't want it to work. He don't want you to work out with God. The devil's fighting the marriages. He's fighting you and I. He's fighting us. He's fighting the children of God to keep them from serving God, for living for God. He is fighting the children of God. He don't want them to come in covenant with God. He don't want them to live for the Lord. He don't want them to seek after the face of God. He don't want them to do what's right. He wants them to come and go and do what they want. But let me tell you something. Jesus wants us to come in covenant with him. He wants us to become one with him. He wants us to have a made-up mind and a determination to live for him. He wants us to come with him in unity. And you know what? That's the thing about it. A lot of people don't want to do that. They want them when they want them. They want to come and go. And he's not somebody to be used and Jesus will show us that one day. When they thought they were going to use them, all of a sudden, it's over. It's gone. Where are they at? Where's he at? Where's she at? Why? I thought she was going to wait on me. I thought he was going to wait on me. Let me tell you something. Jesus is not going to let us enter in that door one day. When those that commit fornication don't want to commit their lives to God. They don't want to turn it all over to God. They don't want to turn their hearts over. They don't want to turn their lives over to God. One day, he's going to shut that door, and you're not going to be able to get in no more. Not going to be a chance. There's not going to be no doors to walk through. There's not going to be church here no more. There's not going to be a building here no more. There's not going to be no mama, no people that are Christians to run to. There's not going to be nobody to lay on hands and pray for you. Because, see, he won't allow us to have fornication. Because, see, when he comes back, fornication won't enter in. And, see, I'm not talking about in the physical sense. I'm talking about in the spiritual sense. I'm talking about the spiritual things of Christ. The spiritual things of God. Because God wants us to enter in covenant with him. He wants us to get committed to Christ. Become one with Christ. In Exodus, uh, it says right here, Genesis 15 and 18, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, 
saying, Unto the seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt, and to the great river, the river Euphrates. In Genesis seventeen twenty one, But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee as at this set time in the next year. He made a covenant with Isaac, and Sarah bare a child, even though they, uh, it was impossible, she still did. And God made his covenant with them because they became one, and there was blessings behind that. Exodus 24, 8, 18 says, And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning of these words. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in his clear... Uh, cl- they misspelled this. <laughs> but anyway, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw God and did eat and drink. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give the tables of stone and a law and the commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, Tarry here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur, are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and the cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he, sh- he called Moses out of the midst of this cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got up get him up into the mount, and Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. And now I'm going to tell you something. When he made that covenant, he wrote it in stone. I love that part because he wrote it in stone. And you and I as children, before we came to know Jesus, before we came into that covenant with Christ, I'm going to tell you something. We had stony hearts. We didn't know Christ. We didn't know the scriptures. We it, Before I even knew the word of God and the commandments and laws, when I was eight years old and I came to know Jesus Christ and I married him at eight years old, all of a sudden he started writing, co- he wrote those scriptures upon my heart the things I didn't even understand why my uh, my life was changing at eight years old why I felt the things that I felt towards things I mean I was totally in blindness my heart was a stony heart but then he turned it into a fleshly heart he put his spirit inside of me and he wrote his commandments and he wrote his laws upon me and he brought a covenant in there because I called on his name and he loved me but then there was a time in my life that I went uh, 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 committing adultery on him and when I fell astray when I was running around and I thought I could do these things when I thought it was okay to come and go as I please and the Lord was dealing with me he was saying no you cannot you're married to me Cheryl you were one we became one when you was eight years old yes uh, let me tell you something it seems like awful young but let me tell you something there is when that kind of marriage is a totally different thing you can come to God at any age you can marry him at any age and then I came to know him and he wrote his law and command. He let me know what I can do and what I couldn't do. He convicts me. He lets me know through the Spirit of Christ and through His Word as I study the Word of God and as I was taught as a child and as I was taught in the Word of God. Let me tell you something. The, the This child grew up. This child became an adult. This child, I'm talking about the spirit man. Y'all take a look at the spiritual part. Don't take a look at the physical part because you as a child of God, you as a spiritual child, you've got to grow up. There's a time to grow up and you have to let that spirit man grow up. That spirit man's got to make some promises. That spirit man's got to take those vows serious. You got to take those vows serious with God. And you got to keep that covenant with him. And you got to say, I've got a made up mind. I'm going to make it made, have a made up mind that I'm going to be determined to go on no matter what comes my way. No matter what comes my way. So Moses come down out of the mount. Can you imagine 40 days and 40 nights? Jerry, I'm going to go for 40 days. We didn't even hardly let our engagement last that long. I'm going to leave you for 40 days and 40 nights, Jerry, to go see how, get, make sure I want to get, be in covenant with you. I'm going to go over here for a while, and I'll see you in 40 days and 40 nights. Jerry would have already split on me. She don't love me. 
<laughs> so that's just an excuse. Can you imagine? Jeffrey, you got to wait 40 days, 40 nights for Sarah so she can make up her mind whether she wants to go in covenant with you. Amen. <laughs> he loves her. But let me tell you something. Here's the thing about it. When you and I come in covenant with God, there's a time, a process that it takes a place that it's up to you to go to that mount. It's up to you to go up to the high places. It's up to you to make up your mind. It's time. It's time to go up that mountain. It's time to get those covenants. It's time to make it to consecrate to God. It's time to get consecrated. It's time to, to exchange those rings. It's time to have a made up mind that I'm going to serve God with my whole heart and I'm not going to serve him just partly. I'm not going to commit fornication. I, I'm not going to use him anymore. I'm not going to abuse him. I'm not going to tell uh, lip service like the Bible said. They serve me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Their heart's out there in the world. Their heart's doing other things, but their mouth, their body sitting here but their heart's way out there and I'm going to tell you something it's sad to know a man or a woman they're sleeping with somebody they're married to somebody but their heart somebody else's bed over there well Jesus don't, is the same way he don't want people over here in the church saying my heart my, my heart's over there in the pool hall my heart's over there in the club my heart's down there in the ditch my heart's down there over here but my lips are praising God well let me tell you something you're so far from God God, my, my, my life is revolved around all the, and maybe it isn't even a club. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's, it's situations around you. You're so wrapped up in it that you forgot that God called you out of this world to do a work for him. You don't think that God has anything for you to do. But Jesus said, I've got something for you to do. I'm calling you up out of this world. I want you to come in covenant with me because, see, you want to come and go as you please. Nobody gave you the right to come in and go as you please I died on Calvary's hill I died and went to the cross I was pierced and bruised for you and for your iniquities that you might be spared out of the world that's going to be destroyed as it was in the days of Noah as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah this world shall come to an end it will come to an end it will not continue to go on these houses, these lands and these buildings will be dissolved they will be destroyed and they'll come to nothing. And where will you be found then? Where will you be then? Where will you be standing when you stand on judgment day? Who will be you, your God then? Will it be the things of this world that took you away from the things that you ought to be doing and the commitment and the covenant with me? Whose bed are you lying in? Are you lying in the bed of the blood? Belial, are you lying in the head of Delilah? Let me tell you something. Don't be deceived. Do not be deceived by the things of this world. The devil will tell you, you don't have nothing to do for God. But let me tell you something Jesus said. I called you out. I called you from this world for a reason. And it's to be a light to the darkness. It's to be a light to those that are lost. It's to be a covenant with me. And it's to put on the characteristics of Christ. It's to be like him. It's to love. It's to show mercy. It's to show goodness. It's to show kindness. Are you showing these things? Are you showing? kindness or are you showing mercy or do you not care Jesus said you better care because one day when you're standing on judgment day there's going to be a time when I speak to you and say you work your iniquity I know you not because you refuse to come in covenant with me I don't know who you are I don't know where you came from but I know where you're going exit because Jesus he brings us to a place in our life. And I'm going to tell you something. I know people, they get fed up. And they come to the place. That's it. Exit, boy. Exit, girl. I'm fed up. I've had as long as I've given you, and I'm sick of it. There's going to be a day when Jesus comes back, and he's going to split the eastern sky. And let me tell you something. That's it. He draw the line. It's over. There's no more getting in. Done with. It's over. Sorry. You can't get in covenant then. Don't want your ring now. I don't want your promises. I don't want your love now. I don't know who you are. Too late now. 
Oh, but I've been busy. I've been too busy with the things of the world. I've been too busy trying to make money. I've been too busy trying to live the life. I've been too busy trying to clean my house. I've been too busy taking care of this and this and this and this. But let me tell you something, Jesus said, but you were too busy for me. I don't know who you are. You never came in covenant with me. Jesus said it's time to to make some time for him. It's time to come in covenant with him. I'm not talking about the physical sin. I'm talking about coming in covenant with God. You can take this into a marriage too, but let me tell you something. I'm talking about coming into a covenant with God because God says it's high time. Can't you see what's going on around you? Can't you see we're living in a wicked generation, that we're living in the days of Saul and Gomorrah? Let me tell you something. The men are getting, they, they, they're more interested in what the other man looks like. They want to run in packs like dogs. And women the same way. They're more interested in what each other look like more than they are what the men look like. And that's pretty sad. Second Chronicles says, let's, let's go on over to Leviticus. <clears throat> Here's what he says about them, why they won't come in covenant. And if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning egg, that you that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. You shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. What is it saying? It's saying everything that you put your hand to. All the money that you increase in, it will come to naught. It will be destroyed. It will be consumed. It will have nothing. It, it's all in vain. You can give to church all you want, but that ain't going to get you into heaven. You can give to this building all you want. You can come into the house of God. You can give to another church. You can go to that church all you want. You can give thousands. You can give millions. But oh, they'll appreciate it. The pastor will appreciate it. I'll appreciate it. Somebody comes in here, but they still won't save their soul. It still won't get them into heaven. What's going to get them into heaven is when they come in covenant with God and say, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want? How do you want me to live? What, what work do you want me to do in the house of God? What, what, where, where, what part of the body am I? What am I? What do you want me to do? Is it just write letters to people? Is it to be a prayer warrior? Is it intercede? Is it to teach? Is it to preach? What do you want, God? What do you want me to do? How, what part of the house do you want me to clean up? The whole thing, he says. I also will do this. And I will set my face against you. And you shall be slain before your enemies, that they hate you. They that hate you. You think they're your friends, but they're your enemies because they'd like to see you be destroyed. Shall reign over you, and you shall flee when none pursueth you. And if you will not yet, after all this, listen to this, hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more. Seven times more for your sins. Seven times more for your sins. And I will break that pride of your pyre. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if you walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. And I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children. Now listen to this. And destroy your cattle. I'm talking about spirits that we cannot see, things that are going to destroy everything that comes in our path, the curses. I've watched many of people, and I'm going to tell you something, they refuse to come to God. They know to serve God. They know to make the right choices, and they know who to call on, but they refuse to call. They run like blind mice. They run like they're blind as a bat. They're running as hard as they can, and they don't want to come to the Lord. They run away from the light, and they run into the darkness. And let me tell you something, everything that they put their hand to, nothing comes of anything. They follow after the darkness, running towards the darkness. And you know what's in darkness? Nothing. You ever try to walk in the darkness? I do when I try to get to the bed at night. And I usually don't try to walk around the bed because I'll hit that pole or trip over that chair. So I climb right over Jeff Jerry. I climb right over the bed. I'll climb over him. I don't care if I wake him up. He's so, such a heavy sleeper. It don't matter. So I just climb right over him. I head on that side of the bed, and I'll just climb because I can't see through the dark because my eyes haven't adjusted in that dark. And so what happens when they get in darkness? They come to and fro, don't even know which way they're going until they get hurt because they run into darkness, and they refuse to run into the light. I will also send 
wild beasts among you, which shall rob your children. And if you will not be reformed by me, by these things, now listen to this. Boy, God's not giving up on you. He's trying. But we'll walk. If you still will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you. I'm gonna, uh, now I'm not going to chase after you. I'm going to start walking contrary to you. And I will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you, which is the word of God, which brings correction and also brings revenge. That shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together with your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered unto the hand of the enemy. And here's what I also like about this, because this nation that turns their back on God, don't think that the enemy's not going to come in. Don't think those gods are coming in. Don't think that God's not going to lift up his spirit off of that. Let me tell you something. You and I better hang on to the Lord as much as we can, because in this day and time that we're living in, in this generation where it's beginning evil, I mean, in the past 10 years, I've seen so many things happening. I mean, I, it, I was watching, me and my brother, we were sitting in there watching that history um, channel, the history channel. And we were watching the History Channel, and they were talking about uh, the scientists. My brother really loves scientists. He likes to look in those um, telescopes and look up into the stars and the heavens. He's, he was always like that, and he loves things like that, and he likes to listen to that. But let me tell you something. They were talking about all that and how they can see the what the Earth is coming to. And then what did they do? They went. The same scientists reflected back to the, the Word of God. All went back to the Word of God. So then they started showing how all the beliefs of how everybody believes that the world's coming to an end and how we're closer to that. And I thought, these are the scientists made up their mind that they believe that revelation is so and that it is true and that this bible's got it right on track and there's nothing false about it and it's a true thing that it is coming to an end and when you got scientists and they're not even of god and they're not even serving god they're pointing out all these religions that believe that this world's coming to an end and that it is rapidly decaying i'm talking about morally decaying it's morally decaying to a place where the people have turned back to wild beasts turned into dogs dogs and God destroyed them flooded the whole earth and the only ones that got saved were the ones that were in covenant with God same things happening today it's morally decaying it's declining let me tell you something as we see this decline look up for your redemption draweth not because Jesus is fixing to take us out and he's about to destroy this world just like he did Sodom and Gomorrah. And where should we be? What covenant should we have? Shouldn't we go into to a covenant with God? Shouldn't it, isn't it high time to get married? And it, or before it's too late? Before you no longer can see him again? Call on his name again? Before you can ever pick up the phone and call him again? <laughs> Second Chronicles 34, 31, 33. I'm almost through. And the king stood in his place, made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart, with all his soul, to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. And he caused all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. And Hosea took away all the ab abominations out of all the countries that pertained to the children of Israel and made all that were present in Israel to serve, listen to this, to serve the Lord their God. And all his days they departed not from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. And let me tell you something. I'm going to teach my children, my children's children, to follow after righteousness, to follow after God with all their heart. I'm not going to tell them everything's going to be merry. I'm going to tell them exactly what the word says. It says if you marry, it's a good thing to marry. If you can't withstand yourself, it's a good thing to get married, but if you do, you will have problems in the flesh. <laughs> I got news for you. You're going to have problems in the flesh. We're going to have problems in our marriage because it's just so. Because when you got two flesh and you bring them together, because let me tell you something, like I said this morning, that's why I, I didn't want to really want to get into Sunday school because when the Spirit of God enters in us, don't think that that carnal flesh don't want it there. You got two together, and they're warring against each other. This is warring. The spirit man, the spirit of Christ that lives in us, in this flesh is warring against it. So then when you get a husband and a man together, they're warring against each other to take that rightful place. Well, guess what? 
You better let Jesus take its rightful place. You and as a, a, as children of God, we are to submit to our husbands, and so he can take his rightful place, but he is to love his wife as he loves his own self. He is to love her and nurture her and care for her. I'm not talking about spoil. I'm not talking about babies today. I'm talking about love them. Love them. Care about them. And what is Jesus saying to you and I? We are to love him. We are to nurture. We are to care. He loves you. He is our head. And he loves and nurtures you. He cares about you. And so what does he want us? To submit ourselves unto God. Marry Christ. Submit yourself unto God. And say, Lord, what have you got me to do? Submit yourself to Christ. Submit to him. And let him know. It's time, and I want to be a submissive servant. I want to be a submissive child of God. I want to submit my life to you. I want to live the way that you want me to live. I'll do what you tell me to do. I may not like it, Lord. I may not want to go here. I might not want to leave this church and go to this other church, but I'm going to submit my life to you. I may not want to go and, and, and give this up, but I will because you're asking me to. Because I submit my life to God. I made a covenant with him. I decided this is the way it is. I'm going to follow after Christ. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions according to the mercy. Remember thou me for the goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright. This is Psalms 25, 7 through 14. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, and to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, parting my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord, and him that shall teach him in the way that he shall choose? His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. Listen to this. If you choose... And you follow after the name of the Lord. You seek after the Lord and you fear God. And you choose him. And you, should, and you want to be taught in the way of the Lord. His soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. Our children shall inherit all these things. Our children will inherit the eternal life. They will inherit the goodness of God. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. In other words, you're not going to know any secrets until you come covenant with God. He'll show you the secret things of God because he'll show your children the secret things of God. Jeffrey came in the other day. He's telling me about something that happened. He said, man, Mom, why did I dream that? Why did I have that? Because God has already given my children the same inheritance, and he's showing them the things that God's, he's not revealing secrets from their life. He's revealing secrets into their life, showing them things that are about to take place, that take place. In that same situation, something took place, and he had no idea it was going to take place except by the dream only. And so several things. And so what is happening? God's bringing them into a place. And so he brings us to a place where he's going to reveal those secret things to our life, not leave us in darkness on that, but let us know that he is in his plan, is part of his plan, and these things are going to come to pass. And you cannot change it. You can try to change it, but you can't. And God will reveal things to you about your children. He'll show you things about your children. Donna, you'll have dreams about your children. You'll think, man, why did I dream that? And next second you found out it happened because he's not gonna he's gonna show you that everything is part of his plan not to fret not to worry not to stress don't give up don't don't freak out you know because things aren't going right and they're not doing right but because God's showing you I'm in control and I see your prayers I see your tears and I know what they're you're going through and I will r raise this up and, and I, I'm giving you just paraphrase I'm not saying this how it is but I'm saying God will reveal secret things into your life he'll show you things that are to come to pass he shows you and I things that are coming to pass he's not gonna leave us in secret he's revealed a lot of things to me over the time and every bit of it come to pass and I'm gonna tell you something God we don't know the timing or the space if everybody would let's stand Jerry you can put a song on You know, God wants us to come in covenant with him. He wants us to give it up. He wants us to say, it's no more time to play around. I want commitment in. I want commitment in your life. I want you to make up your mind. What do you want? Do you want to be married? What, what do you want? Do you want to be married to me? Christ is saying, do you want to be married to me? You know, because I'm, I'm really getting tired of this. I'm getting tired of playing around. God's saying, I'm, I'm really getting tired. And there's going to be a day that comes when he can't open the door no more because he's destroying this world. 
He's going to split the eastern sky. There's no more doors. The door is open now. The door is there. He's saying, come on in. He said, come and covenant with me. Come on. And I'll, 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 I'll give you my promises. I'll give you the blessings of the eternal life. It may not be always the physical things, but it's always the spiritual things that are needed most of all. More than any of the physical things never makes you happy. Always brings more sorrow, I found out. There are people, the more you have, it seems like more sorrow. <laughs> and then I found out the people that don't know Christ at all know what to do with it. They sure have sorrow. But when they know what to do with it. But let me tell you something, Jesus is calling us out. We're, we're, we're a peculiar generation. People called out. Chosen by God, you're chosen from the, before you were born. Before you even knew that this world even existed and God existed, he called you out. He knew you. And he knows the very hairs on your head. He knew. Even the ones that's got a lot of hair, and like Sarah and Donna, and us that have few and we can count them like Jerry and Jeffrey. <laughs> you can get out there. But then you've got those that's got so much hair they don't know what to do with. And then you've got me that's got kind of in between. But you know what? God still knows every single one that fell. He's got it in a record. He said, he said, I even know the very hairs that fell. I thought that was amazing. He knows all those that even fell from you. <laughs> he keeps your tears bottled up. And when you come in covenant with him, he keeps a record of it. That's the reason why words do hurt. Because when you're in covenant and you love somebody, those words hurt. They pierce through. And so when we tell God we love him, don't think he doesn't see it. You know, Joe, it affected, you know, I thought well, I was going to squall and bawl. And Alma said, I started crying. Me and Cotty started bawling because Joe started crying. He couldn't even say the words to show his love without start crying. He did that with his parents when we went to the, uh, where they, because they didn't make their speeches at the uh, wedding, but they made their speeches at the reception. Um, not the reception, a uh, rehearsal dinner. And so they did their speeches there. And he couldn't even talk to his parents. He started crying again. Everybody had to go put their arms around him because he wanted to show his love. Jesus is crying from above. And he's saying these words, that song is saying, I love you and I want to covenant with you. And he wants us to melt at his feet. He wants us to come to him. And say, I give it up. I give it all up. I give up everything that I thought I was supposed to have. Everything that I want. But I want what you want, God. I want you to go. I want to go where you want me to go. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to give what you tell me to give. I'll not give when you tell me not to give. I'll do whatever you want, God. So if anybody this morning wants to come down for prayer. Or if you're li listening to the CD. You got a hold of this CD this morning. And... Uh, Somebody handed you the CD, and you want to know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you say, well, I hear what you're saying, and I've been playing around, and I'm tired of playing around. I want to give it up. You don't have to be here in this building. You don't have to be down here at these altars. Wherever you're at, you might be in a car. You may be in your house. You may be sitting in a rocking chair. You may be sitting on a couch. Maybe you're sitting at a table. Maybe you're listening to it with two or three friends. But wherever you're at, and maybe there's some Christians around you and they can reach over to you and say, it's time. This word was for you for this hour, for this time. You were supposed to hear this. And it's time to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so if everybody would, let's bow our heads. So all you have to do is bow your head and say, Lord, I'm tired of playing around. I want to be used by you. I want to use the callings that you called me out of this world to do. Lord, I pray that you would forgive me of my sins. And repeat everything that I say. Repeat after me. Lord, forgive me. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my iniquities and my wrongdoings. My playing around. My committing fornication. Lord, I pray that you would take the blood. And you would take that blood covenant and wash over me. And wash away my iniquities and my sins. Bring me in a covenant with you. Lord, show me your way. Show me the ways that I should walk in. Help me, Lord. Show me where I need to go to church. So help me to find a spirit-filled church that I will live for you all the days of my life, that I will seek after righteousness. I will seek after God with my whole heart. Write your laws 
and your commandments upon the tables of my heart in your precepts, that I will not sin against you, Lord, and that your word says that I have an advocate with the Father who is just forgive me when I sin, and that I can come to you, and you will wash that blood. You will, with your blood, you will wash over and cover me with your righteousness. For I know that in you I can live. Lord, I praise you for what you've done. Thank you, Jesus. If you repeated that prayer and you made it a covenant with God, call on his name. Ask him to strengthen you. Ask him to give you more strength to make it through each day. Get in the word. Get a word-based church that teaches the word of God. In Jesus' name. Man.